but somebody you... watching the door. We almost had him. He'll never, never believe me now, no matter what I say to him. But... The casting process for the 1951 movie, soon to be discussed, was a meticulous task. Producers sought actors who could bring depth and authenticity to their roles. For the lead role, they chose Richard Basehart. Known for his work in theater, Basehart's ability to convey emotional intensity made him an ideal fit. His audition showcased his talent, and the producers were convinced he was perfect for the part. Paul Douglas, a seasoned stage and film actor, was cast as the police officer negotiating with Basehart's character. Douglas's chemistry with Basehart during screen tests solidified his selection. Their interactions felt genuine and engaging, adding to the film's tension. Barbara Bel Geddes, an up-and-coming actress, was chosen to play Douglas's love interest. Her charm and vulnerability were evident in her audition, making her a perfect counterbalance to Douglas's ruggedness. The supporting cast was carefully curated as well. Agnes Moorhead, an esteemed character actress, was cast as Basehart's mother. Her emotional range added depth to her character, making her performance memorable. Deborah Pandit, a young starlet, played a pivotal role in the film's climax. Her fresh-faced innocence and acting skills impressed the producers, securing her a place in the cast. In conclusion, the casting process for this movie was a careful blend of talent, chemistry, and range. Each actor brought something unique to their role, contributing to the film's overall success. Irish starvation. I don't need any signs. <laughs> well, you don't have to be a heart to wear the green today. Everybody does it. In 1951, the movie 14 Hours showcased a unique directorial vision. Directed by Henry Hathaway, this film presented a compelling narrative centered around a man threatening to jump from a high-rise building. Hathaway's approach was deeply influenced by Italian neorealism, a style that emphasized realistic depictions of everyday life. Hathaway's creative vision was to create an intense, suspenseful atmosphere focusing on the emotional turmoil of the characters involved. He achieved this by employing long takes and minimal camera movements, allowing the actors' performances to take center stage. The director's preference for natural lighting further enhanced the film's raw, realistic feel. Collaboration was key to Hathaway's process. He worked closely with his cast, including Richard Basehart, who portrayed the troubled man on the ledge. Hathaway encouraged Basehart to delve deep into his character's psyche, resulting in a powerful, nuanced performance. Hathaway's collaboration with the crew was equally significant. He worked closely with cinematographer Joe McDonald to create the film's distinctive visual style. McDonald's use of wide-angle lenses and high-contrast lighting added to the film's tension and drama. The result was a movie that transcended its simple premise, offering a profound exploration of human emotion and resilience. Hathaway's directorial vision for 14 hours left a lasting impact on the film industry demonstrating the power of realistic storytelling and character-driven narratives. I'm, I'm uh, sorry about holding up the parade. Let's talk about the 1951 movie that kept audiences on the edge of their seats. This film is filled with surprising moments that will make you laugh, gasp, and even tear up. Did you know that the movie was based on a true story? The event took place in 1938 when a man spent 14 hours on the ledge of a high-rise building. This gripping tale was then adapted into a movie that captured the hearts of many. Among the many characters in the movie, the role of the police officer, Charlie Dunnigan, played by Paul Douglas, stands out. His portrayal of a weary cop trying to save a man's life is both heartwarming and inspiring. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below and stay tuned for more fascinating facts about this classic film. I know I've, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I love Chris. I loved your mother. In the production of the 1951 movie, 14 Hours, the set design played a pivotal role in creating the film's intense atmosphere. The story unfolds on the ledge of a high-rise building, presenting a significant challenge for the art department. To achieve this, they constructed a life-sized replica of the building's facade, complete with detailed brickwork and windows on an MGM soundstage. The film's locations were primarily set in New York City, but due to logistical challenges, the production team decided to recreate the cityscape on the studio lot. They meticulously designed the set to include not only the building's exterior, 
but also the bustling city streets below, filled with taxi cabs, pedestrians, and authentic storefronts. One of the most innovative techniques employed during production involved filming the high angle shots of the character on the ledge. To ensure the safety of the actor, the film crew used a specially designed hydraulic rig. This apparatus allowed for smooth, controlled movements while maintaining the illusion of the actor being high above the city streets. Logistical challenges arose when filming the crowds gathered on the streets below. To manage this, the production team hired hundreds of extras, each with specific instructions to create an authentic and engaging urban atmosphere. Additionally, the film's tight schedule required careful planning and coordination to capture the necessary footage within the allotted time frame. Despite these challenges, the production of 14 hours showcased the film industry's ability to innovate and adapt, resulting in a captivating and suspenseful movie that resonates with audiences even today. The movie, also known as 14 Hours, is a gripping drama that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. Released in 1951, the film is a testament to the power of storytelling and the impact that a single day can have on a person's life. The show is set in real time, following the story of a man who spends 14 hours on the ledge of a high-rise building, threatening to jump. The film explores the emotions and motivations of the man, as well as the people around him who are trying to save him. The movie features a talented cast, including Paul Douglas, Richard Basehart, and Barbara Bel Geddes. Douglas delivers a standout performance as a police officer who tries to talk the man down from the ledge, showing great emotion and depth. Basehart is equally impressive as the man on the ledge, conveying a sense of desperation and hopelessness that is both heartbreaking and compelling. The film is also notable for its realistic depiction of the event, with no punches pulled when it comes to the harsh realities of the situation. The camera work is gritty and raw, capturing the tension and drama of the moment in a way that is both powerful and authentic. Overall, the movie is a must-see for fans of classic drama and suspense. Its gripping storyline, talented cast, and realistic depiction of events make it a standout film that is sure to leave a lasting impression. That street guys will be another one along any minute. You know how many girls call up the hotel here today? The music in the 1951 movie, composed by David Raxon, plays a crucial role in setting the emotional tone. Raxon was known for his ability to create music that deeply resonated with audiences and complemented the narrative. For this film, he crafted a score that captures the tension and drama of the protagonist's predicament. Raxon's score is primarily orchestral, with strings, brass, and percussion instruments used effectively to build suspense and evoke emotion. The music swells during intense scenes, heightening the viewer's sense of anticipation and fear. During quieter moments, the score becomes more introspective, reflecting the character's inner turmoil. In an interview, Raxon discussed his approach to composing for this movie. He stated, The music had to reflect the character's emotional state, but also the mood of the city and the passing of time. To achieve this, he incorporated a ticking clock motif throughout the score, subtly reminding the audience of the protagonist's dire situation. The soundtrack also includes several popular songs from the era, which are used diegetically within the movie. These songs not only add to the film's authenticity, but also provide a stark contrast to the original score, highlighting the character's isolation and despair. Notably, the movie's main theme has been praised for its haunting beauty and ability to encapsulate the film's emotional tone. Raxon's score is a testament to his skill as a composer, demonstrating how music can significantly enhance a film's narrative and emotional impact. Look at the awkward hands that cannot touch your beauty. The production of the movie involves several scriptwriters, including Arnaud Dusso, James Gow, and Joel Sayer. However, the final film did not include their work. Instead, the movie is based on a real-life incident that occurred in New York City on July 26, 1938. John William Ward, 26, stood on the ledge outside a room at the Gotham Hotel for 12 hours before ultimately jumping to his death from the 17th floor. The movie was later adapted for radio, with Paul Douglas reprising his role for a Lux Radio Theater broadcast on March 23, 1953. The radio broadcast also featured Terry Moore and Marvin Bryant. All right. 
Give me a couple of minutes to clear out the room. One of the most iconic scenes in the movie takes place on the ledge of a high-rise building where the protagonist, Robert Kosick, played by Richard Basehart, stands precariously. The scene is a study in tension as Kosick contemplates jumping from the building. The camera work is masterful with tight shots of Basehart's face conveying his inner turmoil and wider shots that emphasize the height and danger of his position. Director Henry Hathaway wanted to create a sense of realism in this scene. So he had a 50-foot section of the building's ledge constructed on a soundstage. Basehart spent hours on the ledge, even when the cameras weren't rolling, to get a sense of the character's desperation. It was a very intense experience, Basehart recalled. I felt like I was up there on that ledge with Robert, and I think the audience did too. Another memorable scene takes place inside the building, where a group of police officers and psychologists try to talk Cossack down. The scene is a masterclass in ensemble acting, with each performer bringing their own unique energy to the table. Paul Douglas, who plays a gruff police lieutenant, gives a particularly memorable performance, alternating between toughness and empathy as he tries to connect with Kasich. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy, with the use of high contrast lighting to create a sense of drama and tension. The camera moves fluidly around the room capturing each character's reactions and adding to the sense of chaos and confusion. The impact of these scenes is still felt today, with the movie often cited as a pioneer in the suicide drama genre. The film's raw, unflinching portrayal of mental illness and the human condition continues to resonate with audiences, making it a true classic of American cinema. Hathaway himself was proud of the film's impact, saying in an interview, we wanted to make something that would really make people think. And I think we succeeded. The movie has stayed with people in a way that few others have. Indeed, the movie's legacy can be seen in the many films and television shows that have tackled similar themes in the years since its release. From Man on a Ledge to the Bridge, the influence of 14 Hours is clear, making it a true icon of American cinema. The horns will never get through. We get a chance, we'll back them out. Okay, okay. I should have listened to my... In 14 hours, Henry Hathaway employs strategic camera techniques to maintain audience engagement. By alternating between shots of the character on the ledge and the reactions of the crowd below, and utilizing distinct camera angles, Hathaway effectively avoids monotony. Interestingly, the film features minimal music, with only brief scoring at the beginning and end. This sparse musical score adds to the film's tension and realism. The movie was shot in a unique manner, with exterior scenes filmed on location in New York City, while dialogue scenes were shot on a replica of the building and on studio sets in Hollywood. This hybrid filming approach was common for big studio films of the era. The 14 Hours also boasts an impressive cast of up-and-coming actors in minor roles and as extras, many of whom would later achieve major success in theater and film. These actors include Jeffrey Hunter, Joyce Van Patten, Janice Rule, John Randolph, Harvey Lembeck, Brian Keith, Richard Boehmer, David Burns, Ossie Davis, John Cassavetes, and Grace Kelly in her first screen appearance. Notice. I want to help you. I think you ought to tell me what it's... The 1951 movie, now known as 14 Hours, left a significant cultural and social impact. Audiences were captivated by its intense portrayal of a man threatening to jump from a high-rise building, which was a relatively new concept for films at the time. This movie resonated with people on a deep level as it explored themes of mental health, isolation, and the human condition. The film's raw and realistic depiction of a person in crisis contributed to discussions about mental health in society. It subtly highlighted the importance of understanding and addressing mental health issues, which was a relatively unexplored topic during that era. The movie's influence could be seen in the growing interest in psychology and sociology in the following years. Moreover, the movie inspired other films and pop culture references that dealt with similar themes. It paved the way for more nuanced portrayals of mental health and personal struggles in cinema. The film's unique narrative structure, focusing on various characters connected to the central crisis, also influenced storytelling techniques in later productions. In addition, 14 Hours served as a commentary on urban life and social connections. The movie depicted the hustle and bustle of city life contrasting it with the protagonist's isolation and despair. This contrast resonated with audiences, leading to discussions about the importance of community and human connection in urban settings. 
Overall, 14 hours left an indelible mark on the cultural and social landscape. Its exploration of mental health, urban life, and human connections struck a chord with audiences, leading to thought-provoking discussions and influencing pop culture. Okay, okay, nobody's to blame. Do you want to talk to him? I think it'll do any good, but he's been closer to his mother. I've had the whole burden. In 1951, a film called 14 Hours featured Richard Basehart in a role that would later impress Federico Fellini. Fellini was so moved by Basehart's performance that he offered him the part of the fool in his own film, La Strada, because he believed Basehart could handle anything after 14 hours. Interestingly, before this film was made, Orson Welles had expressed interest in the subject matter. However, he had a different vision for the story. He believed that the film should focus on the crowd watching the tragedy unfold, rather than the man on the ledge. Unfortunately, many character actors in this film faced difficult times after its release. Some, such as Howard Da Silva, Martin Gable, Jeff Corey, Leif Erikson, and John Randolph, had been associated with or accused of associating with left-wing political groups or causes, even communist groups. Soon after, they were called before the House Un-American Activities Committee to testify about supposed communist infiltration of Hollywood. Those who refused to cooperate were blacklisted and did not appear in films for many years. Erickson, who had been married to Francis Farmer, named names and was cleared. This film, like many others, was a reflection of the political climate of the time and its impact was felt both on and off the screen. It doesn't matter anything, anything to sublimate his drive. Easy, Doc. I took a little French, but I didn't keep up with it. The 1951 movie, now known as 14 Hours, received considerable acclaim from critics and audiences alike. Noted film critic Bosley Crowther of the New York Times praised the film for its extraordinary suspense and superbly sustained tension. He also commended the director, Henry Hathaway, for his tight and taut direction. Audiences were equally captivated by the movie's gripping narrative and strong performances. The film's focus on the psychology of its characters, rather than sensationalism, was a refreshing departure from typical crime dramas of the era. 14 Hours was also recognized with several award nominations. The Writers Guild of America nominated the screenplay for Best Written American Drama, and the film received a nomination for Best Motion Picture Story at the Golden Globes. These accolades are significant for those involved in the film, as they highlight the movie's artistic merit and cultural impact. The nominations and positive reviews helped establish the careers of the film's director and actors, and the movie has since become a classic of the crime drama genre. Moreover, the film's exploration of mental health and the human condition remains relevant today, adding to its enduring appeal and legacy. The critical reception and awards received by 14 Hours serve as a testament to the power of thoughtful and compelling storytelling. I kill myself if anything happened to him. <laughs> If he doesn't hurry up, he's going to miss the evening editions. They all... In 14 hours, Richard Basehart delivered a remarkable performance despite personal hardships. He acted with a sprained ankle and poison oak, which he acquired while grieving his first wife's death. His physical limitations led him to rely more on facial expressions, a skill that became a trademark of his career. Initially known for playing eccentric characters, Basehart excelled in these roles. The film's original title, The Man on the Ledge, was changed after John William Ward's mother requested it. The studio speculated about changing the movie's location, but it remained set in New York. Producer Saul C. Siegel secured special permission from the New York Police Department to cordon off a large section of downtown New York as a single extensive set for the film. This allowed for a more authentic and immersive depiction of the story. Yeah, we, we kid her a lot about going to one of those rub and punch in the making of this movie, tension often filled the set due to its intense subject matter. To lighten the mood, actor Richard Basehart, who played the distraught man on the ledge, would frequently entertain the crew by performing magic tricks during breaks. During one scene, Basehart had to hang from a building for an extended period. Unbeknownst to the directors, he had removed his safety harness, aiming to convey more authenticity in his performance. Fortunately, a crew member noticed and quickly secured him before anyone else did. The film's leading lady, Barbara Bell Geddes, formed a close bond with Basehart off-screen, which translated well onto the screen. Their friendship was so strong that when Basehart suffered a severe injury while filming another movie, Bell Geddes was one of the first people he reached out to for support. 
Noted method actor Paul Douglas, who played a police officer in the film, went above and beyond to prepare for his role. He spent time with real-life officers, learning their mannerisms and speech patterns, even adopting some of their habits during filming. Despite the heavy subject matter, there were moments of levity. For instance, when Douglas' character had to climb up the side of the building, he struggled with the strenuous task. The crew couldn't help but laugh as Douglas huffed and puffed his way to the top, taking breaks along the way. This movie marked the directorial debut of Henry Hathaway, who was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He insisted on filming the entire movie on location in New York City, believing it would lend authenticity to the story. This decision added an extra layer of challenge as the crew had to navigate the busy city streets while filming. In the end, the hard work paid off, resulting in a compelling and intense film that left a lasting impression on audiences and critics alike. The behind-the-scenes anecdotes only serve to enhance the appreciation for the dedication and talent that went into bringing this story to life. Nothing happens, okay? In the 1951 film, Richard Basehart played a character persistently referred to as young and a kid, despite being 37 years old at the time. His on-screen mother, Agnes Moorhead, was only 13 years older than Basehart, and his father, played by Robert Keith, was just 16 when Basehart was born. Barbara Bell Geddes, who acted in the movie, did not appear in another film until Vertigo in 1958. Meanwhile, the film marked the debut of Grace Kelly, who would later become a prominent figure in Hollywood. The age differences in the cast and the career milestones of Bel Geddes and Kelly are just a few noteworthy aspects of this movie. The film offers a fascinating glimpse into the world of acting, where age is often just a number and new talents are continually emerging. Love me, don't you? I haven't done anything, have I? You haven't done... Undoubtedly, 14 Hours has left an indelible mark on film history. Released in 1951, this movie was a pioneer in its depiction of real-time storytelling, unfolding a single event over the course of the titular 14 hours. This narrative technique, rarely seen before, brought a new level of intensity and urgency to the big screen. The film's influence can be traced through the decades, with many future filmmakers drawing inspiration from its unique storytelling style. The 1990s saw the release of Nick of Time, a thriller that mirrored 14 hours in its real-time narrative. More recently, the critically acclaimed TV series 24 adopted this format, further solidifying the legacy of 14 hours. Moreover, the movie's exploration of mental health issues was groundbreaking for its time. It delved into the psyche of a man on the brink, humanizing him, and sparking conversations about mental health and society. This portrayal paved the way for more nuanced depictions of mental health in films like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and A Beautiful Mind. In essence, 14 Hours was a trailblazer, pushing the boundaries of storytelling and shedding light on important social issues. Its influence continues to resonate in modern cinema, a testament to its enduring legacy. I didn't quite understand it, but, but it was beautiful. I know it by heart. The film's release was delayed for six months due to a tragic event that occurred on the day of its preview. Spiros P. Scuras, a Fox executive, had to shelve the movie as his daughter took her own life by jumping from a building, coinciding with the film's harrowing subject matter. Upon its eventual release, the movie contained some storyline changes mandated by Scuras. Included in the American Film Institute's list of 400 movies nominated for the top 100 most heart-pounding American movies, this film left an impression on audiences and industry professionals alike. Grace Kelly, an actress in the movie, caught the attention of Gary Cooper during a visit to the set. Charmed by her demeanor, Cooper described Kelly as different from all these sex balls we've been seeing so much of. He subsequently cast her in High Noon. Despite Cooper's praise, Kelly's performance did not receive critical acclaim, and she returned to television and stage work after the film's release. Let's run through it once while we wait. The above entitled... In the 1951 film, viewers were introduced to a young Janice Rule, marking her debut in the industry. Notably, the movie also featured actress Agnes Moorhead, who would later become well known for her role as Endora in the popular 1960s television series Bewitched. Additionally, Sandra Good, who played the nosy neighbor Gladys Kravitz in Bewitched, 
also appeared in the film in an uncredited role as a hotel switchboard operator. Interestingly, the film's subject matter was deemed unfit for his taste by renowned director Howard Hawks, who declined to direct the project. The movie tells the story of a man threatening to jump from a high-rise building and the various people and circumstances that intersect and impact his decision. The film's exploration of mental health and the human condition continues to resonate with audiences today. I feel better now. Did 14 hours leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear about your personal experiences and memories related to this classic film. How did it affect you? And what impact did it have on your perspective of cinema? Perhaps you were moved by the intense drama or captivated by the suspenseful storyline. Maybe the movie inspired you to explore new genres or motivated you to delve deeper into the world of cinema. We encourage you to share your thoughts and engage with others who have also been impacted by this memorable show. Whether you were touched by the powerful performances or intrigued by the unique narrative, we want to hear from you. So, don't be shy. Tell us your story and join the conversation. Let's reminisce about this classic film together and explore how it has left its mark on the world of cinema. And if you enjoy our cinematic explorations, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. We can't wait to hear from you. Don't. I've, I've tasted the wind. I've tasted the earth.